Now let's get into the nitty gritty, people. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So, oh, my man, Paul, he says he likes the studio, could use some blue. Well, we're going to talk about blue. My man, Paul, he is our resident Kentucky fan, people. And let's get into this. Let's get into this. So March Madness started off yesterday. Let's start here. ESPN had 28, 28 million brackets filled out. Let's take that in. 28 million brackets ESPN had filled out for the men's tournament. 1,800, just over 1,800 are still perfect. Unbelievable. 28 million, I think it was 1,856 are still perfect. That is incredible. That's why we love March Madness, people. That is why we love March Madness. So that's it right there in a nutshell. So let's start it off. I won't even crush my Kentucky fans as of yet. BYU, disappointing. Gets beat by Duquesne. What the hell? What the hell is going on? Duquesne smacks you around. And the game got close, but let's just be honest. Duquesne basically owned the day yesterday. They owned that game. They controlled the entire basketball game. And then smacked you around at the end. Disappointing for the Big 12. That was an ugly loss. Ugly, 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 ugly. But the surprise, NC State beating Texas Tech, to me, that was the bigger surprise. Because I didn't think NC State would have anything left. They won five games in five days. I'm thinking, yeah, they're going to be cooked. They weren't cooked. They whipped Texas Tech. They didn't just beat Texas Tech. They whipped them. Lord have mercy. You talk about an embarrassment. Gee, many Texas Tech should be ashamed of themselves. That was disgraceful. And NC State's not even any good. But, oh well. And Texas Tech played well all year. And they got whipped. They got whipped. People are saying it's going to be the path that they took in 1983. That NC State. I see you over here. Yella fella on TikTok. Said they're going to do the same thing in 83 and go all the way to the title. They could happen. I mean, the only thing that NC State needs to do to get into the Sweet 16 is beat Oakland. You know, something that Kentucky couldn't do. Beat Oakland. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I mean, look, my Kentucky fans have to be, I mean, look, y'all need to shut down all bridges in the Lexington, Kentucky area. You need to go find your best Kentucky fan, your best Kentucky fan friend. Give them a hug. This has got to be brutal. This is brutal. I mean, Oakland had never even won a game before in the tournament. But they beat Kentucky. A guy came off the bench. Off the bench. Scores 32 points. Makes 10 threes. A guy that isn't even good enough to be a manager at Kentucky. Let's just put that into perspective. If this kid went to Kentucky, they wouldn't even let him practice as a student manager. He's not good enough to do that. Yet, 32. Lit you up. Lit Kentucky's ass up. I love it. Yes, one in four in the last five years. No, it's not the last five years. Because they say the last five years of the tournament can't be five. It's the last four. It's ugly. It's ugly. Whew. People talking about firing John Calipari. They want to get rid of him. Saying the game has passed him by. Hey, man, could Calipari ever coach X's and O's? I mean, was he ever a good X and O guy? Or did he just have more talent? He always had more talent. That's the difference. And now that guys are figuring it out, and he said it, hey, the game's changed on us. Teams are getting older. Uh, Yeah, 
Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't the game get older? If I'm a fringe guy of going professional or going to the NBA or not, why wouldn't I stick around in college another year now? Why wouldn't I do that? You know, if I'm a, a late first round, early second round pick, why would I risk going to, to the pros for that when I can stay, develop my game more, and make money doing it? Because you can make money now in college. NIL has changed that. Hell, the NBA recognized it. They shut down NBA Ignite. Remember they opened it up, what was it, four years ago? For guys to go and, hey, you can make some money, you can train with professionals, you can learn how to be a pro. NBA shut that down and said, yeah, we don't need it anymore. We, we literally don't need that anymore because guys can make money in college now. So we don't need this at all. <laughs> but Kentucky getting beat, man. Whoo! Somebody said Kentucky, <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken. <laughs> Unbelievable. And yeah, that's 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 bad. This is a bad look for for John Calipari and Kentucky. This is a bad look. At some point, you have to win in the tournament. At some point, you know. And then Calipari he said something stupid last night. Said, "Well, look, I don't want this one game to define their season." What? What do you mean? <laughs> what, what, what are we? What are we supposed to do? I, I know this will define their season, but it shouldn't. What are you talking about? So let me get this straight: you didn't win the SEC, you didn't win the SEC tournament, you got beat by Oakland in the first round of the NCAA tournament. What are we supposed to do? What, what, what should define your season then? A bunch of success. I mean, what, what should define your season? Or should the narrative be Kentucky again underachieves in the tournament? That is what it is. So that's what it is. And no, he said it shouldn't define their season, but it would. And my question is, how the hell shouldn't it define their season? Of course it should. Of course it should define their season. That's what they are. Choke artist. I mean, am I wrong? Tell you, prove me wrong. I'll listen. If anybody can prove that Kentucky didn't choke, I will listen. And here is a great point by my man, K-Ned. Some coaches aren't as strong in new world of everyone else can now play players too. Exactly. Because before, we knew, first of all, we already knew that te- that schools were paying players. Under the table, it was happening. It happened. But now that everybody can do it, and it's out in the open, you just don't have that advantage anymore. And when you don't have that advantage, how good are you actually at coaching? And we're starting to see it. We're starting to see it. So... That was a massive choke. Oh, but it's fixed. Gotcha. Gotcha. But if it was fixed, how is it a choke? I don't understand that. If if you choked, that you're not fixing the game. And if it's fixed, then it's not choking. So decide which one you want it to be, and then let's do that. But you can't say, oh, man, it, it was a choke job, but it's rigged. What? goon squad come on man come on i'm trying to have personal growth you guys are making it hard you guys are making it hard on me lord have mercy you're telling me that it's rigged but then it's a choke it can't be both it's got to be one or the other wildcats got rings they will bounce back what rings did they get i'm curious what like what ring did they get So, I'm just curious. And look, I mean, my man, Paul, I know you're a happy guy, but that smile on your face with that shirt on stings. Was there a reason that you didn't think that I was going to wear my Louisville shirt today? Of course I'm wearing my Louisville shirt today. And look, I get it. My Louisville basketball program is hot dog water. 
It is that nasty water that comes out of a garbage truck as it's driving away from your house. That's how good my Louisville basketball program is. Just awful. But here's the one thing to keep in mind. Louisville won just as many tournament games as Kentucky did this year. Zero. Zero. And I feel great about it. And Kentucky losing makes me feel great about it. And there is nothing that anybody can say that is going to rain on that parade. Nothing. So, mm-mm-mm. What, what, hold on. Somebody says, my man Darren Howard, he's mad. He hates March Madness. The problem is, is because his bracket looks like Swiss cheese. Somebody just took bullet, just shot that thing. It's horrible. And while I'm talking, I had the big B bracket challenge that people got into. A lot of y'all got into it. I appreciate it. And unfortunately, Big B is dead last. How the hell does that work? How the hell am I last in my own bracket challenge? What the hell is going on? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And see, my wife, here she is, April H. She's getting into the comments. Oakland shirt added to the comments. Every time somebody upsets Kentucky, she buys a shirt. She's got a St. Peter's sweatshirt, and now she's getting a good old Oakland shirt. You know what? I'm for it, though. I'm for it. If my dollar's got to go to something to support a team that beats Kentucky, that upsets Kentucky, that embarrasses Kentucky, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So, hey, Big B. You're broadcasting out of Louisville. I live in Louisville myself. No, I'm not in Louisville, my man Larry. I'm I, I'm from Louisville. Grew up in Jeffersonville. But no, I'm in Dallas. I am in Dallas. I do remember Kevin Ware injury. That was disgusting. Felt horrible for him. Felt horrible for him. So, who is Scotty D coming on here lying about Patrick Mahomes? Lord have mercy. People will say anything, man. People will say anything. Now, this is going too far, my man, Al Woody. We love Al. He says, has Kentucky lost its blue blood status? No. No. That is, no. Kentucky, look. Kentucky is like the Dallas Cowboys. Kentucky is like the Dallas Cowboys. Always promise this is their year, then can't get it done. But Kentucky is a team that everybody loves to hate, just like the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I did get into a little bit. Somebody said that, you know, Kentucky was the standard. And I'm like, Kentucky is not the standard. They are the most popular team. I I could go that far and say they are one of the most popular team, if not the most popular team in college basketball. But they're not the standard. No. So, absolutely not the standard. But to say that they're the, the the standard, no. But, yeah, they're not going to lose their blue blood status. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, hold on. My main king of sevens. He wanted Nevada to win because of Trey Coleman from Jeffersonville. Absolutely. You know how mad I was at that game? Dayton coming back. Well, they were down, what, 17 with like five and a half minutes to go and went on a crazy run to win the game. I was so upset, not to mention my money line. I had I had the perfect parlay yesterday. Feeling good about it. I had Oregon money line, I had Nevada money line, and I had Texas money line. I'm feeling good. And all of a sudden, Nevada, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Just, oh. I just, I was so upset. It just made me mad. Just made me mad. I'm like, I got this thing in the bag. I'm going to the bar. Things are going to feel good. And then this. But that's March Madness. That is March Madness. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, 
Who looked good yesterday? Was there anybody that just looked like a really good, phenomenal team yesterday? Tennessee looked pretty good. UConn, they play today. Arizona looked all right in the second half. They looked really good. Iowa State got it together. And I think a lot of people think, hey, if you're not blowing out a double-digit seed in the first half, you're not playing good. That's not true. That's not true. Creighton looked good. Yes, they did. North Carolina looked good. Yes, they did. I just don't think you can you can go by – Hey, if you're not winning by 25 points at halftime, you're struggling. That's not the case. I mean, those other guys on those other teams, I mean, they play college basketball too. And they get scholarships too. Sometimes it just takes a minute. Sometimes it just takes a minute. So, but that's college basketball. I'm looking forward. The one game yesterday, and before we move on to today, Samford and Kansas. Lord have mercy. Oh. First of all, Kansas is up 22 points in the second half. I mean, Jesus. I mean, I just, and then the game gets down to that call and that ref makes that call. Oh my God. I mean, look, I know people defend officials and officials get mad that people bash them because they have a tough job. They do. However, When you make calls like that because you're out of position, that's why people get so upset. The ref made that call because it looked like he fouled him because he was trailing the play by so much. Had he been down there, he would have seen that the kid literally didn't touch him. And, oh, I don't know. Like I said, we get on officials a lot in here. And I'm going to continue until they make changes to be better. And you cannot make a call like that because you're out of position. It's horrendous. And it looked bad because of the way that the guy fell. He literally never got touched. He never got touched. It just, and then, you know, you hear, now you can't review plays like that, unfortunately, because you can't review foul calls. Because first of all, if you could review foul calls, Lord, basketball games would be four hours long. So you can't do that. But my problem with all of it is just be in position. Just be in position. You know, because it's one thing to make a bad call. Okay. It's another thing to make a bad call because you're out of position. And then when you're out of position, You anticipate something that never happened. And because of the way the kid fell, we know why he fell. He was trying to dunk the ball with two hands. He had a firm grip on it. The kid comes from behind, knocks it out of his hands, and his momentum got stopped. I mean, clean play. Clean play. But instead, the ref makes a call. He anticipates a call that never happened. And oops, hey, I'm sorry, Samford. I know for some of you guys, this is the last game you're ever going to play. Too bad, so sad. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it's that kind of stuff right there that that drives me and a lot of people insane. So I love the tournament, though. I can't wait for today. What good games are you guys looking forward to seeing today? What good games are you guys looking forward to today? And again, as a reminder, everybody, Monday through Friday, Big B Daily, we are live on TikTok and we are live on YouTube. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. UAB? Okay. FAU? Okay. Who else? Who else are we looking forward to today? Nebraska, I can dig it. New Mexico, I I got New Mexico winning today. I got New Mexico winning today. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. What we need to do, let's, let's do something fun before we shut down the show today, people. Let's do something fun. Let's come up with, um, what do y'all want to do? A three game 
or a five, five or a three team or a five team parlay. If we're going to do it, we might as well do it, make it fun. Let's come up with a five team parlay. Let's do a five team parlay. And I'll write it down and we'll check back on Monday and see how we did. Let's do, let's do five. So everybody's saying a three teamer. Why a three team? Why a three team? Let's do five. Let's do a five team. So who do we got? James Madison, New Mexico, and UAB. Yeah, that's iffy. That's iffy. Let's try to win one. <laughs> Let's try to win one. Who do we got? Who do we got? Hmm. Let me just look. Let me look. Little money line parlays. New Mexico. I like that. Oh, my God. Stop calling, people. New Mexico. Let's see. Let's see. James Madison. New Mexico. I don't like the UAB that much. I don't like the UAB that much. Um, boom, 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 Utah State. What about Utah State over TCU? I like that one. I like that one. So, we got New Mexico. We got New Mexico. Utah State. What was the other one that I said? James Madison. So, Yukon, Auburn, New Mexico, Duke, and Houston. See, the problem, you can't, you're not going to make any money on un- taking Yukon. And Houston and Duke, you gotta, we gotta venture out a little bit. But that's not a horrible one, though. That's not a horrible one. UConn, Auburn, New Mexico, Duke, and Houston. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. But if you're doing money line, you ain't gonna make no money doing that. You have to do spreads on that one. So we'll see. We will see.